We've seen in several of my videos recently the huge increase in the tokenization of assets, regulation, CBDCs, and how the traditional financial system, so banks, governments, central banks, etc., are trying to use, leverage, and take advantage of the blockchain distributed ledger and smart contract technology from crypto with several cryptocurrency firms working with these institutions to achieve this. And in this video, we're going to look at the United States and see which banking giants and institutions are working with the Securities Industry and Financial Markets Association or SIFMA and the Federal Reserve Bank of New York to test a new tokenized financial system that merges bank deposits, central bank digital currencies, and tokenized assets. We'll also look at how the SEC in the US continues to attack crypto companies at the same time. So please do like this video and subscribe to the channel so I can continue to offer more content for you in future. Just a reminder that nothing contained here is financial advice. And let's jump straight in and take a look at what the US banks and government are planning. MasterCard, Citigroup, JP Morgan, US Bank, Chase, Swift, TD Bank, Zions Bank, Wells Fargo, and Visa have set up the Regulated Settlement Network Proof of Concept and are working together to test, using blockchain and distributed ledger technology, the settlement, so transaction or payment in other words, of digital or tokenized commercial bank money, wholesale central bank money, US treasuries, and other tokenized assets, such as investment grade debt securities with SIFMA, which is the Securities Industry and Financial Markets Association, as we've seen already, who are acting as the program manager for this Regulated Settlement Network Proof of Concept, or RSN POC, stating on the 8th of May 2024 that this tokenization would allow one system, so blockchain or ledger, to be tested with the aim of this RSN to create an interoperable network with opportunities to improve the operation of these multi-asset settlements for users together by incorporating commercial bank money, central bank money or CBDCs and securities into one system or ledger for payment settlements. All parties involved state that the aim of the RSN is to make transactions, including those across borders, more efficient and to reduce fraud. It will be a programmable shared ledger which would operate 24-7 unlike the current financial system and transactions will be made in dollars. Those also contributing to the RSN include the Bank of New York Mellon, Deloitte, Tassat Group, the technology and private blockchain company, Broadridge, the fintech solutions company, DTCC which stands for the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, the MITRE Corporation, which is a federally funded not-for-profit corporation with R&D centers in the US on behalf of government sponsors, and the International Swaps and Derivatives Association, with the New York Innovation Center at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York observing, overseeing, and analyzing the project. So there are certainly a lot of large institutions involved in this test, which obviously will be big and will test how bank deposits, CBDCs, tokenized assets, and securities work together in this new financial system. A lot of the participants have released statements on the RSN, with one you can see here from the executive vice president of blockchain and digital assets at MasterCard, mentioning blockchain technology, shared ledger technology, programmability, and operating 24 seven frictionless payments with this RSN. And then this statement from the head of digital innovation for capital markets at Broadridge, who mentions interoperability, tokenized assets, multi-asset settlements, 
and distributed ledger technology with other senior members of institutions, including SIFMA, Visa, Citi, SWIFT, TD Bank, Zions Bank and Wells Fargo, all putting out positive statements about this regulated settlement network, mentioning things like increased innovation, collaboration across public and private sectors, and self-executing contracts, or in other words, smart contracts. So the aim of the RSN is clear, with them looking to improve the current financial system through areas like transactions, and they're operating 24 seven and leveraging smart contract, blockchain and distributed ledger technology. But a lot of people will be concerned by this huge project with them maintaining a large amount of control on what we do with our money. Given that these smart contracts are still programmable and they can easily freeze funds, limit accounts and payments, etc., with of course no mention of decentralization or an individual being sovereign of their own funds in the RSN. And this is all taking place at a time when other companies in crypto using this blockchain distributed ledger and smart contract technology are under attack by the SEC or Securities and Exchange Commission with no real guidelines or regulations still as to how they must operate. With Robin Hood receiving a Wells notice by the SEC on the 4th of May 2024, signalling its intent to take legal action against it. The SEC continuing its fight against Coinbase, with Coinbase trying to appeal with the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, arguing whether the Howey test should apply to crypto and digital assets. But with the SEC shutting them down and recommending an appeals court not taking Coinbase's request into consideration, after labelling Coinbase as an unregistered broker. The SEC also sued Kraken in November 2023 under similar charges of not registering as a broker, clearinghouse or exchange, with Kraken arguing in February 2024 that this should be thrown out because the cryptocurrencies listed should be treated as commodities rather than securities. In April 2024, the SEC then filed a 39-page opposition to Kraken's motion, and this will be ruled on apparently on the 12th of June 2024. Because as we've seen glimpses of here already, some companies are fighting back and trying to stand their ground, with the DeFi Education Fund and a company called Bieber suing the SEC at the beginning of April 2024, stating that their airdropped token wasn't a securities transaction and that they are not investment contracts. Then, on the 23rd of April 2024, the Blockchain Association and Crypto Freedom Alliance of Texas, which is a great name, filed against the SEC's definition of a dealer when capturing digital assets activity and stating that the SEC had gone just too far. And finally, Ethereum developer Consensus suing the SEC for injunctive relief. So to block the SEC from investigating it, bringing charges against Metamask and to declare ETH as not a security. But they all have two things in common. Firstly, that these crypto companies feel that the SEC has gone much too far in how it regulates crypto. And secondly, that there is no clear regulation in the first place for them to follow and abide by. But that ends this video looking at the regulated settlement network and then the SEC. And as always, I'd love to know what you think in the comments below about it. And if you're interested in more of a tailored approach to your crypto education and you think you'd benefit from having someone look over your shoulder and guide you on your journey, I do offer one-to-one -one coaching to those who have the desire and the means to educate themselves further. And there are links in the description where you can message me and book in a free video call to see if we'd be a good fit. And if you found this content interesting, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel as it really does help. And have a great day.